here with Calla Hales, uh, director of a Preferred Women's Health Center on Latrobe Drive. Um, as you can see behind you, the Love Life 40 week march. This is one of them on yep. a Saturday mornings. They, uh, they come and do prayer services and marches. And this is a new property that someone involved with the organization has bought. How long has it been that they've been setting up on this property right next to your office? Um, they, this property officially became theirs in last July. Uh, so July 2018, uh, they cleared the property and started using it in the fall of last year. Um, before that, they were actually at a property up the street on Latrobe, closer to the intersection of Wendover. Right. How has that affected business here? It has definitely impacted the call center and the clinic, just because there's a mass, it's such a visible mass now of protesters. Um, it does add to confusion with all of the cars in the road. Um, there's clearly an issue with parking now, um, when people are coming in and seeing all these cars. Um, and there's a real, there's clearly a sound issue as well with this aspect because we're constantly having issues with amplified sound uh, facing the offices. And that's a, an issue that's come up in Charlotte City Council as far as they've suggested, the city planners have suggested a, a new ordinance mm -hmm. that regulates um, amplified sound within, what is it, 250 feet of medical uh, clinics? The new sound ordinance would prevent amplified sound during business hours within 200 feet of health facilities, churches, or places of worship, and schools. Right. Is that something that you feel like would have a, a, a big effect here? Uh, I do think that would be incredibly helpful. We are seeing amplified sound almost every day. The days we don't see amplified sound is because we've somehow had a volunteer win the permit and choose not to use it. Um, and that's actually come into question uh, with protesters feeling uh, in sense that we've gotten the permit and aren't using it. And as far as just nationally, there's been um, momentum for the anti-abortion movement. Laws passed, Ohio, Alabama, and Georgia. Has that affected you here locally? Do you feel like there's people are more emboldened, people are more coming out more because of that? What have you seen in response to that? Uh, I'd absolutely say people are more emboldened. Um, and there's also a lot of misinformation and like uh, attempted misinformation at play with that because even though all these laws have been voted on and passed, they're not, none of them are in effect and anything that should have gone into effect is blocked. So it's really important for everyone to know that abortion is still legal in all 50 states. How long have you been out here as a clinic defender, um, escort, volunteer? Uh, I'm going on my third year of being out here. Mm -hmm. And how have you seen things change, if at all, within those three years? Things have definitely escalated over the last few years. Um, I think with the election of President Trump and the rhetoric that he uses, his administration uses, and these anti-choice groups is just ramping everything up. Mm -hmm. And then when you add into that the Love Life Charlotte group that brings hundreds to thousands of people out here, it just creates an environment of chaos. And today, it's Memorial Day weekend, it seems a little bit light. Would you say this is a, one of the smaller crowds you've seen? Yes, uh, we, we do see that this is impacted by bad weather. Um, if it's a holiday weekend, it does seem like some of the churches don't show up as much. Mm -hmm. And as far as just recently, there's been a, a movement of, I wouldn't say movement, just a, a string of laws passed in different states. Have you seen that people have, have become emboldened by that or has the thing seen anything change in that effect? Yes, it definitely emboldens the anti-choice groups because they feel like they have governments that will back them and their bad behavior out here. Um, we certainly see them violate the sound ordinance. We see them violate the barricades that are set up on Saturdays because they think that they have the right to do that because they have the support in a lot of states and in the federal government right now. How long has Cities for Life been around? Cities for Life has been around since 2010. Mm -hmm. And just in your own words, what is, what is your mission here? So our mission is basically to uh, offer help and hope to women going into the, to the abortion center mm -hmm. and to uh, proclaim the gospel of Jesus and let them know that there's hope in Him. Right. And what do you hope to accomplish by being out here on a regular basis? 
uh, to reach the women that are going into the abortion center and offer them a, another option. Right. And within the last uh, year, if not six months, there's been a potential change to the noise ordinance here in Charlotte. I know you've been a vocal opponent of that. How do you feel like if that were to pass, uh, how do you feel like that would affect your work here? Um, I mean, it'll affect it in the way that we won't be able to overcome uh, times when the abortion clinic plays loud music to counteract our voices. You know, mm -hmm. we won't be able to be heard. Right. So, and anyway. as far as <clears throat> this new property that, I know that's, that's not to do with Cities for Life, right? Correct. That, that's a partner yeah. ministry of ours, Love Life. Right. Uh -huh. um, has that, how has that helped uh, in the efforts out here as far as, a, I know there's a coalition of different organizations. Yeah. How has that helped as far as y'all's mission? Um, I mean, with our mission, it's not really changed a okay. whole lot as far as we're concerned. It certainly f facilitates uh, love life and being able to do their prayer walks. Right. Uh, so that's there. mainly so what, it's, what it's there for. Correct. You have publicly said <clears throat> that you, or Cities for Life, would get behind a lawsuit uh, to try to change the ordinance if it were to pass citywide yeah. as far as the amplified noise. Is that something <clears throat> that you're still adamant about? Um, I mean, certainly if there's an infringement of First Amendment rights, I think every red, blood, uh, red blooded American should want to you know, get behind fighting against infringements of First Amendment rights. Right. And I know it's been a constant sort of back and forth here between um, clinic supporters and organizations like uh, Cities for Life. Do you feel like you've been treated fairly with the work that you do out here, whether it be by police, by the city? No, I know there's there's a lot of unfair treatment. Mm -hmm. How so? From uh, well, you know, like citations that have been written. You know, the pro-abortion people will stand in the driveway, and the police will just look at that. If one of our people was to stand in the driveway, we'd immediately either be written a citation or threatened with a citation at least. Right. You know, at one point they tried to get no parking signs down this whole road so that we couldn't park the mobile ultrasound unit there. Every form of speech that we employ has been attacked by the city of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. How long have you been coming out here as a clinic defender? Almost a year now okay. I've, I've been coming out. What was it that brought you out? I was uh, traveling last year um, with a friend of mine and he mentioned 12th and Delaware, the Netflix documentary about a uh, clinic in Florida and how there was this ministry right across the street. He told me to watch it and I remember watching it and thinking they're just giving bad information out to people. and. There has to be a way to defend that. And so I looked into if there was any type of escort or defending in Charlotte. <laughs> and I found Charlotte for Choice and, and just started coming out right. after that because I just felt like I had to do something. Absolutely. And as opposed to just watch the, the documentary and know mm -hmm. and not do anything. And I'm sure you're familiar with the proposed ordinance change to the noise ordinance as far as the amplified sound. Right. Do you feel like? Um, that will have an effect or have a positive change if that is passed? I just hope that, you know, amplified sound can be useful in so many places. Speed Street this weekend, you know, festivals, Charlotte Shout that happened a week ago. Great amplified sound. In front of a medical facility is not where we should have amplified sound and disturbing people. We're making really difficult decisions for whatever reason. People think I come out here because I'm pro-choice or anti-abortion. My views and beliefs are irrelevant. I come out here because people have the right to this type of procedure. They have the right to these resources, and I'm defending that. It doesn't matter what I think. I'm not here to pass judgment or give my own opinion. No one should be barred or be harassed for our legal medical procedure, and that's just the bottom line. So, you know, changing the ordinance would be great, so we wouldn't have this kind of harassment. Like they don't harass me at the dentist or at my gynecologist. The reality is if I needed to have an abortion, I could go to my private care physician and be referred to a medical facility and do that. No one would ever know. And because here is for people of different means, they don't have that luxury and that's not okay.